Welcome to the Sporting Life Info Goal Euro 2020 betting preview. Part one, we'll be focusing on the home nations over this next 15 minutes or so. We're joined by the Sporting Life Football Tipster team. We'll get straight into it, guys. Are England going to win the Euros? I'll let you take this one. Yeah. <laughs> You want to go? Well, <laughs> I, it's a bit of a sitting on the fence, isn't it? Yes, but no. Yeah. I don't know if that's a suitable answer, but I suppose there's a few nations like it. The, the potential is there for England, and you don't want to get drawn into this pre-tournament. Oh, it's coming home, everyone's loving it. But the fact is that England do have the talent to do it, and they are favourites in some places, second favourites for a reason. Um, yeah. the, the form against the better nations has got better, so could be, could be. Yeah, I think one of the big things for England is... The players have grown up together, and that's a massive advantage for us. And like the parallels between this young England team and the sort of the Germany team and the Spain team that won their respective major tournaments coming up through the youths are really encouraging. I think it's a massive positive for us. We just let a little, a little us slip in twice there. Yeah, sorry, so, England. <laughs> yeah, so who are you actually going to be backing with your money? England. <laughs> <laughs> now, in all seriousness, we have got a very good chance. Uh, we've got a good squad. My my issue is is the coach and what he's going to do because we saw him at the World Cup play a back three. I personally don't like that kind of defensive football, especially when you've got the talent that we have in attacking areas: the Grealishes, Foden's, Rashford's, Sterling's. You know, the list goes on. Personally, I would like to see England play all out attack and try and win games five four. But I know the person next to me. I was just saying, I'm not sure. I, I did just hear a. I didn't take a breath when you said, oh, I'm not sure about the coach. No, yeah, I think with Southgate, I don't think he gets it anywhere near enough credit. And I think what you're saying, maybe he's not, he doesn't have the qualifications to manage a team as good as this, but he's been so instrumental in bringing these young players through. And I think if we're being honest, if Big Sam wouldn't have been caught, you know, and he would have still been the England manager, <laughs> would Mount and Foden and Sancho, would they be in the squad? Or I mean, would Rooney still be in there? And yeah, it'd be Dyer and Rooney. Yeah. And I think he's been massive in the development of players like Mount, yeah. even at club level. The but fact you, that he's shown so much trust. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a valid point. He's definitely helped in integrate these young players. But if you look around the other major nations and you see the likes of Roberto Mancini and Luis Enrique, people who have achieved at the highest level of the game, Gareth Southgate isn't in that category. He's not, and, and that's, that's my main So point. we've alluded to it a couple of times there that we're England supporters, but we're tipsters, we're a betting team. Is it value to back England to win Euro 2020 or not? I'll go first. I, it re really isn't. I mean, like Tom says, the favourites, second favourites in some places. Um, and, you know, work on the XG and the, the underlying numbers and the infragol model. We calculate England have a 10% chance of winning the Euros, which equates to odds of around nine to one. So the, 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 what, the nine to two, five to one in places is just way too short. And um, a lot of that will be, you know, fans that, that will be back in England and wanting them to win, uh, which is why they've seen a bit of money. But overall, they're, they're not a value bet at this tournament, not at this price. If they lose the first game against Croatia and the price drifts, then maybe you might, I might be interested, but um, at the moment, no. Yeah, I think, the reason I might say they're not is not because of the actual team, but because of the side of the draw that England are in. Like, England have definitely got the tough side. If we win the group, we'll play second in Group F. Um, if England finish second in the group, they'll have an easier last 16 match, but then England will play the winners of Group F. And I think that's the reason they're not valued, just because England are going to have to play so many tough teams. Yeah, I'm going to make it three out of three. It's just not interesting enough, is it? Five to one, nine to two, whatever. France are the same price. Tell me, would you prefer France or would you, do you think France or England if you wanted to back someone that price? You're going to France every day. Yeah. Surely. This is not saying they're a bad team, but they've when you look at... Done that well, yeah, France. they're, they're current yeah. World Cup champions. They got to the final of Euro 2016. They've got a history of winning major tournaments. And let's not forget, England haven't won anything. The whole... <laughs> Yeah, kind of 55 everyone's looking at 2018 and kind of they progressed on that finished third in the Nations League didn't they the first tournament of that so they're they're getting there but when we're saying that these two teams are basically the same price I wouldn't be surprised at all to see England get far wouldn't be surprised at all to get to see them get far but just compare the squads compare the teams and what they've done you take it in France at fives at nine to two whatever it is if you said pick a favourite and they're neck and neck you put in France not considerable, but you're definitely putting them ahead of England. Yeah, I wouldn't even put England above the likes of Italy and Spain just because, like Jake said, the draw is so severe and uh, in England's, you know, not in England's favour, it's the opposite way. So, yeah, I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't have us anywhere near favourites. 
the Inforcore model's got them around fourth or fifth favourites to win the overall tournament, and that's with more home advantage than potentially every other team in the tournament. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough route that we'll have to take to win it, definitely. Um, I just said we there. England will have to, <laughs> to win it. Um, but, yeah, they, they've got a chance because the squad is of a, such a high quality. And Jake just alluded to it there for a moment, and you can get all this in comprehensive detail with the Sporting Life Info Goal um, Euro 2020 betting guide, and we'll have previews on every single match, analysis and daily tips as well on site. But home field advantage, so we're talking about England being a really short price. Is, is that the main reason why? And I think uh, if someone could find six, seven to one if the price did drift before that first game on Friday, um, might be slightly more interested. Um, I also would like to see, I know it's, we don't want to talk politics, but you want to see the lockdown rules as well because at, uh, Wembley with a 10% capacity compared to a 50% is going to make a big difference. Um, and you know that, that's been modelled as well um, in actual numbers backing that up. So yeah, that, that would be interesting just to see what happens. I know that you know the, the overall restrictions are supposed to finish um, in, and in time for the final to be played with a full capacity. So. I would definitely hold fire on that because that could make a big difference in this tournament. And yeah, that, that probably is a reason that I feel advantage as to why England are as short as they are. I think it's just, it's just, it is that it, they are the price. I don't think anyone here said that they don't think England will win it, or in terms of that it wouldn't be a surprise whatsoever to see England win it because they're clearly a very talented team. It's just the price just isn't interesting enough. It's just not a big enough price to get on board. Like I said, if it was a, a, a seven to one, an eight to one, I think that's decent value but when we're talking prices as short as they are yeah. it just can't get on board of it so Jake P what are we backing when it comes to England um, in terms of England specials I, I'm not a massive one for specials but the one that did catch my eye actually is Harry Kane to be England's top scorer and you think it's Harry Kane he's top scorer at the World Cup top scorer in the Prem this season he's England's penalty taker I think he's 10 to 11 to be top scorer. I can't see how anyone scores more goals for England than it. That yeah. seems, it feels like it should be one to two. I like that, yeah. I'm going down the, the route of elimination. Um, I think the, the eight to five that's available with Betfair and Paddy Power for England to be eliminated in the round of 16 appeals. Um, I know it's something that you alluded to in the betting guide, Joe, right in your, um, your group, that Southgate could easily throw the group to finish second and avoid one of the big hitters, but I think that there's more, there would have been more of a chance of that happening had England played Croatia in the final group game. But because they play Croatia first, if they lose that game, then they're backing themselves into a corner. They have to beat Scotland and Czech Republic to qualify. If it was the other way around and they beat Scotland and Czech Republic, like we did in the World Cup and then ended up playing Belgium last, I could see him potentially resting players and, and finishing second on purpose. But I think we'll win the group. Um, England will win the group and ultimately will draw France, Portugal or Germany in the next round, and I don't think that we're up to that kind of standard, particularly Portugal and France. Yeah, it's tough. I think, for me, I'd, I'd be looking at young player of the tournament market. I think England have got Phil Foden and Mason Mount, probably both of them in there are really good prices. They're the two favourites, so it's not necessarily the most interesting thing, but you think of players who are 22 and under for the tournament, for the category, 20, um, you know, under 23, who really is probably going to outshine Phil Foden and Mason Mount? Yeah. You can get Foden at fives, Mount's about 13 to two. I mean, you look at the performances they've put in so far this season, I think Foden will PFA young player, didn't he? He's just got so many awards to his name already, both individually and as a team. That if England get far, I think it, it doesn't matter too much, but if England get far, you've got to fancy them to be to be in the run. And even if not, even if it is a court final exit, they've probably done enough there to, to grab the attention. So I think big prices on being honest, who probably else could outshine them in the market? I'm not too sure at the moment. Yeah, they might be favourites, but they're favourites because they're probably the two best young players. Oh yeah, and the big, the big, big price for a favourite as well. Like fives, I think it was, you can get nine to two, 13 to two on mount. So it's a big price for, for two favourites. And like I said, I just can't see who else can really outshine them at the moment based on the form they're coming into the tournament. In. And it's something we'll probably come on to in a bit more detail in part two of the betting guide where we focus on sort of player bets and the best bets that our guys will be focusing on. But Mason Mount in particular, I think it's only about three to four weeks ago, he was actually 20 to one to be young player of the tournament at the Euros. So how big is he going to be at the tournament and how much does the price change reflect how in form he is? He's in form for one, but we also know that he's going to start. 
he's one of the very few players that we know is, is pretty much nailed down for starting berth. Um, Gareth Southgate really likes him, and in fairness, it wasn't so long ago that Mason Mount was getting a lot of stick from everybody. Why has he been included in the England team so often? But Southgate clearly has, has got that one correct. And um, yeah, game times come into the price shortening because he's, he's, he will start, he will play all, every 90 minutes, you would imagine. Um, and yeah, he's banging form. I mean, you know, he played really well in both, both legs of the Champions League semi final, the Champions League final. Um, I thought he played all right in the FA Cup final as well for Chelsea in, in that defeat. So. Yeah, he, he's definitely one to watch. And, and that, that's probably why I would pick Mount over Foden is because I'm not too sure if Foden will have as much game time as Mount. There's also flexibility with Mount, isn't there? That he can play kind of that cam role behind the striker. He could probably push him out wide if he wanted to, if you were doing like a bit of a 4-2-3-1. But you look at England's centre mids as well. You say Henderson, Bellingham, probably is that true number eight type yeah. midfielder. If Henderson's still not fully fit and if he's not doing his evening quizzes or whatever Roy Keane said... <laughs> That if you put them out there as well, and that frees up another role for a for a Grealish, for a whoever Sancho to come in in that area, that's surely going to catch the eye as well. It's the flexibility of being able to play deeper. I think he just offers so much. Yeah. To like so he's going to play. He's going to play every game. Yeah. And him and Rice grew up together, didn't they? So they know each other really well. So they could be good. Just having a little look around the table, you've noticed we've got plenty of Euro 96 memorabilia here and something that is going to repeat itself as the last time that there was major tournament football here is England playing Scotland in the group stages. We'll focus really on Scotland now. Can Scotland get out of the group stage? They can. Um, it will be difficult. I think they've improved um, quite a lot, actually, under Steve Clark. Um, he's done a really good job bringing in younger players as well. You know, Che Adams has come into the fold. Scott McTominay is sort of that rock that they should be building around. And I think through qualifying, he was playing in defence um, as a right side of a back three. But I think they'll push him into midfield just because he's been so good for Manchester United. I mean, he was a standout player in the Europa League final yeah, not good. so long ago. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really difficult and me and Tom, we were talking about this, that their first group game is crucial, isn't it? Because yeah. they play Czech Republic first up, they, those two sides, Scotland and the Czech Republic, are regarded as the two worst teams in that group. So in, in theory, the loser is, is going home because Croatia and England are both expected to beat both of those. Um, so yeah, it, it, they, they could do it, absolutely. They've got, you know, um, but they've got the players to do that. They're a difficult opposition to play against. They make life difficult. They're very uh, defensive-minded in their approach and they can play on the counter-attack. So they've got some tools that can cause issues, but um, it will be difficult. We've just got the prices here. So Scotland to qualify 6-5, to five, Czech Republic 4-5. to five. So where does your money go of those two? Yeah, Scotland. Um, sorry, Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> sure you've made your mind. <laughs> yeah, so I think... I think Czech Republic finished higher than them in the Nations League. And I think so Scotland came here through the playoffs. And I think if it was any other team that got here through the playoffs, not Scotland, then they'd be, you know, they wouldn't be anywhere near that price to get out of the group. If it, if it was North Macedonia instead of the name Scotland, they'd be, you know, much shorter to go out. And I think, I think that's why it's just the name Scotland, why they're, they're that price. And I, I can't see them getting out. I don't think they'll get out of the group. I'm going to be boring and say that I just wouldn't, I just stay clear of it. I just don't think it's interesting enough back in the Czech Republic or, or Scotland to do it at those prices. Like the first game's going to be crucial. They play so Wales, we'll touch on them in a bit, but Scotland and Czech Republic, that first game, I think 2016 when they bought in the third place, playing you need to win a game. The only one that magically didn't was Portugal. So if you draw yeah, three, you probably go and win, or win the whole yeah, thing. But you need three points there. You need, you need three points and you need a good enough like break-even goal difference to do it as well. Um, so that the first game is going to be crucial. If they don't win that, it's not going to happen, is it? If we've been brutally honest, especially if England don't beat Croatia and England only have a point to their name in that second game, then know the importance of winning that Scotland game. So yeah, first game, but I, I might lean towards Scotland, but like I said, I'm just not, it's not interesting enough prizes to get involved in that. And just, just out of interest, I was looking at the actual match odds for England v Scotland, obviously if we played at Wembley. The bookies are giving England a 75% chance of winning that game, which is, you know, staggeringly high and shows you what they think in terms of the, the gulf and class. Um, the Infocom model is going 72%, so it's very much in line uh, mm -hmm. with thinking that England are streets better than Scotland. And, you know, recent, recent matches, recent head-to-heads have proven that's to be the case. And it's going to be a difficult uphill battle for Scotland, especially if they lose that opening game. And just in Scotland's favour, then the players that Clark's brought in fairly late in the piece, 
players that have been injured for the majority of the season. So you look at, could potentially have a midfield duo of McTominay and Gilmore. They're good players for a team at the Euros. I suppose the big problem for them, and when they play England, will they be able to test England? Is there enough goals in that team? Not really, not, not in my book. And that, that leads me to my best bet for Scotland. Uh, and it's something that we alluded to in the, in the Sporting Life Info betting guide. And that is for them to score under two and a half goals at the Euros. Uh, it's around even money at the moment with Skybet. And I just think that that, that price, um, given the, the sort of attacking talent that they have to call upon, and the way in which they're likely to set up against the, the better sides, I think it looks too good. I, I expect them to go out of the group stage, so you, you only need them to score you know, one goal twice in, in one of the, in the three group games, and, uh, and you've got a winner. They, they're much better defensively than they are in attack, and they will be playing on the counter-attack, but the likes of England, Croatia, even the Czech Republic, I think will be able to do it with them. Yeah, like this, this, it's not the 80s and 90s where they had like loads of players in the English top flight and half the Liverpool team were Scottish, and they had some really good players. They've got some good players, but... I, I, they're nowhere near the levels, particularly of England. They're maybe a championship team with a few Premier League players thrown in. And I think, I don't think they'll score anywhere near enough goals. And I think maybe Czech Republic might be able to nick something off Croatia and that'll make it even more difficult for Scotland. But yeah, the goals thing is an issue. I like Clark and I think he's setting up to win matches, which is what you have to do. But Che Adams, as your main striker, you're struggling a little bit, aren't you? My fan kind of had said, yes, I'd like them to do it. But from a punting perspective, just I think we're all on the same page. I think that there are some decent players there, particularly the midfield you mentioned there. They're like some McTominay. They've got John McGinn to call upon. Billy Gilmore's coming in as well after his kind of growing role at Chelsea. The left side of the defence is good. Yeah. Like Tom oh, Robertson. So. Yeah, the, the, that side of defence is perfect. If they can replicate <laughs> those players across <laughs> the pitch, they'd be, they'd be in a great position. But um, yeah, it's just... Shea Adams is obviously a welcome addition for them. I think maybe in the future when he's had a bit more top flight experience, we've seen it with Southampton, he's starting to get on the score sheet a, a bit more than he was, probably aided by Danny Ings' injury. But long term, might work out a bit better for them, but I think it's just probably going to be one word for sure. So we think Scotland are going out of the group stage. Wales in a pretty tricky group. How do we think they're going to get on? I think it's the tight, one of the tightest groups in the tournament, this. Um, I think Italy are, I won't say stand out best. I think they are better than the other three, but the other three are very much of a muchness. The I think we've got somebody that might disagree with you sitting next <laughs> well, to you this yeah, day. Yeah. Or... He's the one who requested the flag in the corner. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, I, I think that Italy will win the group. Um, I think they'll do it quite comfortably off the back of a really solid defence. But when it comes to Wales, they're playing in the group with Turkey. Um, and obviously the, the other team, I have to remind me, Switzerland, that's the one, yeah. They're all, all three of them are really relatively solid at the back and they play predominantly defence first football I mean Turkey I know in recent World Cup qualifiers in particular have scored a lot of goals but throughout the European qualifying campaign they only conceded three goals in a group with France um, so that that to me means this is going to be a really tight room uh, the Infragol model gives Wales a 50-50 chance of progressing which I think the, the market's got the marginal odds on to progress which means there isn't much value in back in Wales but given everything they've gone through in the last 12 months with the, the whole managerial issues um, they do seem to be pulling in the right direction in terms of all playing to a system that's going to benefit them. Um, but I, again, I just don't think they'll score enough goals to be able to get find themselves out of the group stage against what is really strong defensive sides. Yeah, I think it's actually quite a tough group. I think, I think Italy are much better than people think they are. I think <laughs> Turkey are a hugely improving team. And I think Switzerland are coming into this tournament unbeaten six and they won 7-0 recently. Um, I think, I think they're going to struggle and I think they're at 11 to 8 to finish bottom of the group and I quite like that. I think, as you mentioned, the managerial situation is horrible and the less said about gigs, the better. But no disrespect to Robert Page, he's not the manager, he's, he's the standing. And when you think about how well they did at the last Euros and the sort of togetherness and the organisation that they had under Coleman, they haven't got any of that now just because of what's going on and you can't blame them, but how can you have that kind of togetherness and organisation when you're in a situation like they're in. I know it's not as late in the day, but and the by no means of this quality team, but you think of the upheaval late on for Spain at the last major tournament, how everything just fell apart. It, it doesn't take much. Yeah. It doesn't take much at a major tournament, does it, for things to disintegrate. So yeah, yeah. definitely not. I don't think they're gonna be in a good frame of mind going into this. I think, you know, however it should have been sorted out before, but I just think they'll struggle to get out of the group. I think they'll finish bottom. 
Yeah, the tough one, Wales. I wouldn't be surprised to see them win a game, to be fair. I wouldn't, see, I wouldn't be surprised when you think about the potential players they can call upon and the kind of situation they might be in. You can potentially have a Gareth Bale and a Dan James, for example, to play this counter-attacking thing. And if you can hold out well, you could probably sneak a result. The issue might be their goal difference when it comes to the third place. I think you talk Italy, you talk Turkey especially as well, who score a lot of goals at the moment that Wales might have three points, but they might have a minus two, minus three goal difference, which would probably send them out on the rankings of the third place um, teams. I watched them against France in the first warm-up, was it, of this? Yeah. In and to be fair, with 10 men, they were very well organised. I think the scoreline could have been a bit more. It could have been... They did have a chance to score themselves. Hugo Lloris made an excellent save. But that was basically France's first team, minus N'Golo Kante. They were down to 10 men. A very, I mean, why did we have VAR and friendlies for daft it, it red cards? Yeah. But to their credit, they were quite well disciplined after that in a tricky situation. And maybe that will help them in the tournament that... They were up against it for quite a large period of time. And yes, the scoreline was 3-0 and might have been a bit more in the situation against the, the calibre opponent. They, they were quite, they did pretty well in that. So yeah, I, could, I wouldn't be surprised to finish third. It could be a goal difference thing though that maybe does them based on the Italy and Turkey results. Yeah, well, you mentioned the friendly against France. I watched them in the friendly against Albania and they were terrible. <laughs> Albania were the better team for the first half and that says it all. They couldn't score and yeah. they didn't look like scoring. I, I think that both Wales and Scotland will be better for this tournament, even if they don't get out of the group. Because you look at the group of players and they're all very young. There's a lot of good young players emerging, especially in Wales in particular. You think of you know the crop of players. Some of them don't even play for the first team in the club level that are being brought into the, uh, into the international setup. And the same with Scotland. I think that they'll definitely be much better off if they could qualify for another major tournament next time. But the experience will do them good. But again, not expecting much from either. Same bet for me for Wales, under two and a half goals uh, at the Euros. I expect them to only play three matches and against such strong defences, I don't think they'll be able to breach them. So fairly universal, our team thinking Wales and Scotland be out in the group stage at the Euros and England. They could win it, but don't back them to win it. Remember, you can get everything in much more comprehensive detail at sportinglife.com with our comprehensive Euro 2020 betting guide and we'll have previews all the way through the tournament as well as extra analysis and daily tipping guides.